Uh, how do we do in this warm up? Yes? No? Maybe so. Maybe so? Uh, yeah, Henry. Uh, for me, it was maybe so because um, I included the component bit patch and it didn't get through when I debugged it. It didn't get through. Did you? Did a, was it did a break or throw an error? Excuse me? Did your component break or throw an error? No. Oh, well, that's why. I mean, but I purposely, okay, so this time I purposely um, ran that, like, did an error, and it went, I had a dent in the catch, and uh, it went through the catch. But it never created. It. So it would go there first. If you didn't have a catch, it might, it might have gone, it might have gone to it, yeah. But it would be, have to be wrapped in it, so. Okay, so Henry's bringing up a really interesting point. So we haven't officially gone over error boundaries, so that's part of the issue. So error boundary is like its own component. This is like a parent component, and that's where you would put your component to catch. So if something happens to the child, that parent catches it. So if you, you wouldn't be catching within the same component that you're doing your logic in. Does that make sense? So, you know, a, a components ha are children and parents, right? Yeah. So the an, a component that deals with handling errors is a parent component. And all it does is handle errors. But we haven't learned that yet. But, you, but the component itself that you're, like, trying to make something wouldn't have, like, a comp component to catch, really. That would be an, its parent component. To catch the child's mistakes. Well, we'll do that eventually. But that's cool. Okay, I like that you're trying it. Uh, what else? Any other comments on the warm up here? Yeah. Your button won't fire. Do you have a listener on it? Hmm, what are you listening Unclick. for? Unclick? Yeah. I don't know. It, it, it even so, it won't even go. That's interesting. Okay, so let's, uh, let's build this out. Um, so we're in here. I could make a components folder and all of that. Uh, just for... <laughs> Just for brevity, I'm, I'm not going to do that right now. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and in our source, we'll create a new file. And we'll just call this dog app, I guess. And uh, what do we want our dog app to do? Let's see. Is this going to handle state? Yeah, we're going to handle state. What state are we going to be dealing with? The current source of the image tag. So the, the URL, right? So, okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, okay, so we've got our dog app. So let's import React from React. Let's make a quick component. I'm just going to call it dog app. Um, Okay, and we'll make a div here, and that's how we will start. So in our state, we said we wanted to handle a URL or like the image or something, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and say image. And what should that default to? Uh, empty, string. empty string. Sounds good. Uh, and we said we're going to need Axios, right? Yes. So in order to do Axios, I'm going to create, I have to install it. So that's going to be npm install Axios. Right? Gone are the days of the source script tag. Yeah, Doug? Bigger? Yeah. Better? Yeah, Henry? Every time uh, you're going to use, like, let's say you're creating a new app or, uh, 
If we're going to use Axios in the app, we have to install it. Yep. Every single time. All right, so now we've got our Axios installed. And so if we want to use it, we can, I'm just going to go back and shrink this down a bit. We, we can import it here at the top by just doing import Axios from Axios. All right, so it's not too killer of a jump. Luckily, if anything, I think it's, it's nicer than adding that script tag in the head of our HTML. I think this keeps it a little bit easier. Uh, and we said, and we're going to need some kind of function to go fetch all of our, to fetch a picture, yes? We agree? OK. So let's call that fetch photo. Uh, we're going to deal with promises in here. Okay, so async. What? What's crazy? Did you use a wait? Oh, well then that's okay. You can still chain ends. Yeah. Did you do like dot then? Oh yeah, I did that. Yeah, well, that's fine, right? That's the okay. older way of doing it. That's okay. Totally okay to still use dot then. I'm gonna use async though, because uh, I think it's a little cleaner. So let's go ahead and throw a try catch. And so let's go make our request. So that's gonna be let response. Equal away, and we'll grab Axios. That get, and we got to get some URL. I think I have the URL handy. This is from the dog API. Uh, I read the docs, and I found the URL, and then I have the URL there. Yeah, I can close this so we have a little bit more space for now. Uh, okay. Now I want to see what I'm dealing with, right? So I'm going to put a debugger in here. Where should I call fetch photo? Where should I call? Yeah, Henry, what's up? Where should I call fetch photo? So on the render. Okay, so I am going to create a button. Sure. Let's go ahead and do that first. So we'll say button. Uh, we'll have an on click. And on that click, we'll just go ahead and fetch our photo. And I'll say get random dog. Let's see how we're doing over here. Oh, you did. Did you put on your app? Oh, right. See, there's nothing here because we haven't added it to our app. Good call. Let's go ahead and import dog app from dot slash dog app. And instead of writing hello incorrectly, we will instead see our dog app. Like so. Let's make sure it's all connected. We've got our random dog. And when we click our button, we get our response here. So I want to look at our response so I know what to key into, right? This is kind of a pattern that I always do. I know I'm using Axis, so I know it's going to be res.data. And then it says, OK, I have a message and a status. That message looks like the picture to me. So now I know I'll be able to access it by doing res.data.message. OK. So that's what I'll be using. Let's go add that to the code in our dog app. 
So I can just set our state to our new image, pointing to res.data.message. And that seems like that's going to work. What should happen in the event that it doesn't, the image doesn't work for some reason? What might I want to do? Yeah, Henry, what do you think? I could, yeah, sure. What, we could set the state. What do you want to set the state to? Maybe you want to throw an error. So we could throw an error. We could, like, give the user some message or something, right? We could add an error property to our state here. Um, for now, though, I think I'm just going to, like, ignore the fail and say, like, image, and I'll just set it back to an empty string, just re kind, of, kind of reset my state. And just in case something goes down, I'm going to log the error just for now. But on your real projects, don't just log the error because the user doesn't want a bunch of stuff in their console. Um, it would be cool to look in the error boundaries. Maybe I can do a lesson on that in a couple weeks. That would be fun. Uh, OK, so we've got our fetch there. So let's also add. So we could add an image here. Um, we know that the next part of the thing was to make uh, a request where you get multiple dogs, I think, right? You get 10 dogs. So I'm going to go ahead and create a dog component right now just to keep it a little bit more clean. So I'm just going to write the code that I wish I had. So I wish I had it say dog. With an image passing an image, uh, this that state that image passing that in as a prop. So that means I would have to import our dog. So I'll say import dog from <coughs> dot slash dog which I don't have yet, so I also have to go make that. So I'm going to go create a new file called dog. And dog is just going to be a display component. So we're going to import our React. We'll const say dog. Uh, we're only going to pass in the one prop of the image. So I'm going to go ahead and destructure that here. Bless you. But many blesses. You're welcome. Uh, and we'll go ahead and return our image. With our source pointing to our image. Alt tag, I'll just say. And then string. Image tags are self-closing. And then we can export our dog as well. You guys know the Ava song Waterloo? Waterloo? Yeah? Okay. Oh, it's stuck in my head. It's, you know it? Yeah, it's playing in my head so, like, so loud because I was listening to it today and singing to my cat because my cat's name is Nobaru. So I say, I sing Nobaru instead of Waterloo. Anyway, that's just a little bit of cat talk on the dog project. Um, okay, so we've got our image here. Let's see what happens. Uh, we click on get our random dog, and we get this beautiful big dog. Should we start with a random dog picture? Right, every time I click this button, we get a new, new dog. The size is out of control. We should probably add some style onto that. But when we first show up on the page, should we see a dog? Should we see a dog? Yeah. No? I can do whatever I want. Thank you. Well, I'll just get a new, get, get a new random dog. What if, I, what if I do want it to show up? What if I do want a dog? I think I want a dog. If I want a dog, 
Where, what should I, what do I need to change? The call state. What do you mean by that? Hmm. Okay. So I can't do this dot. Like I, don't, I can't do side effects in a constructor or something. Where might be a good place to put this? Yeah, David? Yeah, the life cycle method. Component did not. Everyone's favorite life cycle method. Uh, that and uh, render, I guess. So let's go ahead and add that life cycle method. Remember, this runs one time when the component mounts. So we say component did mount. That's a little function there. And then we can just go ahead and call this dot fetch. Call it up and invoke it. Can I, can we, can we see, So let's go ahead and see now we get the dog immediately. And every time we click to get a random dog, we get one. So that's kind of fun. Any questions on that? Um, yep. So what was the point of the component demo when you just put that in? This gives us a dog on the page right away. So instead of it being empty and waiting for a user to click to get a dog, we get a dog, and then the user can click to change the dog. Okay. So, because right, again, when I first, when I started this, that entire track had fun, like everything you just did, it was inside the component that now I did Okay, so that's great. So Rafid says he put all of this in component demo initially. So that's fine, but the issue with that is that component to mount should only run the one time when it mounts. Okay. So when they click the button, you shouldn't be calling like the function component to mount. You would have to call a different function, which I imagine would have duplicate code to what you put in the component to mount. So the component to mount is the first thing we receive is that the button when you click it, it does other functions for fetch photos. So just... Yeah, so the button is just calling fetch photo, and our component to mount is calling fetch photo. That way we only call it. One time off the bat. Yeah, Doug, did I see a hand? The component did not only runs once because of that component, but it had in the app that would run the process. Nope. Component did mount. Every time a component appears on the screen, it runs one time. If that component leaves the screen, it will run like component will unmount and whatnot. And then if it comes back, it will run it again. But it, while that thing is on the screen, it will only have run one time. Great question. Yeah, repeat. And my second one was, I'm a little confused when you made that second the dot box. Like, what was the reason for all that? Like, and ah. just doing it all in one? So the reason was I just, in case I wanted to do something else, I'm breaking things down into smaller and smaller components. This is definitely a little bit of an overkill considering I just have one image tag. Right. But if I am going to have multiple dogs later on, maybe I want to, because I'm going to have lots of dogs later on. And they'll still all be image tags, but this way I can think of them as like a whole dog, an instance of dog. This will only be dealing with dogs. It's a little less generic than the image tag. This is like, when you're reading my code, you're not looking at it and going, this can be an image of anything. You're looking at it and saying, oh, this is a dog image. So anywhere where you can make something just a little bit more clear to an outside reader. Good question. What else? Any other question? Any other question? OK. Dr. Now. Okay, let's add a uh, style. So there is, we talked a little bit about there being different kinds of styling. Uh, I could make a CSS uh, file and import that, right? We've seen that. 
you can keep doing that. An alternative way of styling things can be inline styling, where we can create like a styles object. Right, this is outside. And I can style things from inside of here. So I could say like, hey, I want my image to have a height of, let's say, 200 pixels and a width of, let's say, 200 pixels. So I want all these square things. I could style things in here by using a style tag property where then I could call my object and key into it in the appropriate spot. So my image is style, we'll point to styles.image. That's just another way, which do I recommend? I still recommend doing it in, in its own CSS file to be. That's how I like to do it, but there are people who like to do it differently, and you just see that this exists. So by doing that, we are able to style it so that they're all the same size. Okay. Yeah, Will. Oh, I could put a CSS reset. That would be fine. Uh, if I was building a full project and not just doing a le lecture thing, I probably would add a CSS reset in my index.css. I would always advise using a CSS reset for any kind of project, calculator project, whatever, right? I would add a CSS reset. Social media project coming up. Again, exciting. It's going to be more fun this time. Oh. But you should just be aware that you can also style things like this. That's all. Any other questions on this one? OK, so let's go ahead and build out the next part of the warm up challenge. So we said we need to have a select bar, right? And we need to have a, where we change the select bar, we can choose a specific breed. And from that breed, we can go out and fetch 10 new dogs to show. Are we on the same page with that? OK. So let's do it. So I'm going to go ahead and build this in app. Uh, I'm going to comment out our dog app for right now because I don't want to lose that just because for you guys, so you guys still have reference, so I'll just build the next one from scratch. Um, but let's go ahead and make our app a class component. So I'm going to say class uh, extends react.component. What? Ah, I am. Nice catch. And then we'll render, render. And just by doing that, we're easily able to convert our project. Okay, and let's see, there, no errors. Great. So in our app, what do we want our state to be? What do we want the state to be? Uh, Doug? An array of images. OK. So we definitely could have an array of images. Uh, 
I'm going to set this up in a slightly different way, though, purely to make a point on a different life cycle method that we haven't played with yet. Fair? So we definitely could have our array of images here. Let's say I don't want that, and instead I'm going to have a different component that once it knows the breed, it's going to go ahead and grab the make an array of images. Yeah, Marvin. Yes. Good job. Exactly. So let's go ahead and add that. So we'll say state uh, is going to be equal to, and we can call it breed. And our default breed will just be empty, yeah? So, part, so I'm writing this so we will see a new lifecycle method. So this is a little bit networking, a little bit more lifecycle. Um, and also it's to prove, like, just keep making a point where, like, multiple components can have different states. That's okay. Uh, you only need, like, one state if two components are using the exact same state. And so for this one, we'll be all right. Um, okay, so then we also need to have some kind of selector of sorts. So let's go ahead and make that its own component as well. So to write the code that I wish I had, right? I'm going to just call this like dog selector. Maybe this takes in a um, selected breed, or I'll just write breed, and this can point to our state. This that state that breed. Oops. And then what else might dog selector want to have? Henry. Uh, um, so like, you know, like, like, sure. Yeah, sure. Let's do it. We can say breed in here. And clean this up a little. Sounds great. We can totally do that. What else might we want to pass to doc selector? Function? Yeah. Uh, let's call it handle breed. Handle breed. And I will call that this dot handle breed. Oops. What's wrong with this? What's going on? Should the cons breed be outside? Option D. What would you guys like me to? What's wrong? Yeah, should cons breed this that state be outside of the room? Yes. Sounds good. Like that? Good catch, everybody. Totally right. OK, so we've got a couple things here. We need a handle breed. So let's go ahead and write that, because we don't have that. And we are counting on it. So let's say handle breed. Should handle breed take in anything? What's handle breed going to do? Sort of. Yeah. Uh, Isaiah? Not quite. So we're actually going to update, just update our state to be whatever breed gets passed in, because it's going to be coming back up via our dog selector. So let's just pass in a breed. And we'll call this set state. And we'll just 
to read. I think I can just leave it like that because they're both called free. Right? That's the same as calling. Uh, I don't know what my error is yet. Let's see. Dog selector is not defined. Well, of course it's not. Uh, let's go ahead and import it. So import dog selector from dot slash dog selector. Uh, that file doesn't currently exist, so let's go make that file. We'll call it dog selector dot js. Okay. So, so, so it's dog selector, a class component. Hmm. Well, what's dog selector going to do? Who can tell me that? It's going to update the parent. But what else, what's it going to present to us? Options. Options. Options of different what? Breeds. Where are those breeds coming from? Yeah. An API? Somebody said that. So do we need state for this? Yeah. Okay. So that means we have to make a class component. So let's go ahead and make our class component. And we will call this dog selector. Uh, we are going to, somebody said we're going to use the API, so let's also import Axios, right? And we said we needed breeds. What should breeds default to? What's it? Empty string. Why? Shit. Because it's multiple breeds that I want to pick from. Yeah, that sounds great. So she says let's start with an empty array. I'm with you, uh, Okay. So let's go ahead and figure out what we want to do here. So in my component did mount, right? Because how many times do I have to fetch these breeds? Do I have to fetch them a lot or just one time? Yeah, for people who said a lot, why do you why why do you say I have to fetch fetch them a lot? All the breeds. Just one time. Right? I only have to fetch them one time. So if I only fetch them one time, where should this go? When should I fetch them? Component did mount, right? It's kind of like a little bit of a pattern here. Every time we're fetching something that we want in the beginning. Okay. So I can make this an asynchronous async await, so I can just say async component did mount. You can write like that, you do not need to make them fat arrows. Uh, what? Yeah, I think it's going to work. If, if it's not, we're going to have to fix it. Pretty sure, but not a like 99. So, close enough. Anyone got a grandparent that's like 100 years old? <laughs> Your grandma just turned 98. Your grandma just turned 98. 
Wow, what a good constitution. Good for her. That's great. If anyone grandparents turn really old, I'd love to hear about it. Uh, just because you never know. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and make our Axios call. So we'll set up our response. We will say await, and we have to go make our Axios.git, and I have that link as well already planned out. So let me just go ahead and my computer, if my computer lets me do it. Okay. Hang on. Okay. So Axios.git are all of our breeds. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and see what the data comes back looking like so we know what we're dealing with. So let's go ahead and pop in our debugger. And we go over here. We have some kind of error for something at this point. I wonder what that error is from. I've expected a string or a class function for a composite component but got object. You likely forgot to export your component from the file it's defined in, or you might have mixed up the default and named imports. So export default dog selector, class extends component dog selector. Let's see if we imported that correctly. Because we did import it after. We didn't name it after the fact. <coughs> yeah, you think it's the path? Maybe. Let's see. Dot slash. That looks okay. Dog selector. I did. Let's see. Does that make any difference? It's all working here. I wonder if it's uh, just a funny error. Oh, here we go. Okay, so I think it just uh, needed like a forced refresh so that I think it got that error when we wrote that path and it didn't exist. Sometimes I've noticed if you change the paths of things, it can get kind of funny. Uh, okay, so now that we're in our uh, debugger as expected, let's go ahead, make that a little larger, and take a look at our res.data. Okay, hmm, res.data.message. So we've got this, this object of keys and values, the values being arrays. So there's, so there's all these subbreeds. Uh, let's pretend I don't care about the subbreeds at all. I'm just going to go ahead and do something like object. I'm just going to go ahead and grab all the keys of res.data.message. And I go, okay, there's an array of all of the main breeds. Does that make sense? This is just, I had this object with all the keys being the breeds, and then the values of those keys were the subbreeds. I don't care about the subbreeds today, so I'm just grabbing all the keys. So I go, okay, that line worked exactly as I would want. So I'm going to just copy it and cut it. And in our dog selector, let's go ahead and set our state. So I'll say this dot set state of our breeds pointing to object at keys of reset data dot message. If for some reason there's an error, I'm just gonna make them blank.
I'll go back to an empty array. And for fun, I'll console log there. Because I, uh, I need some fun in my life. Looking for fun. Okay, so now we've got this this change here. And so let's go ahead and I don't really think we need to pass the selected breed, but I guess maybe we do. So, okay. Inside of our render here, do we need divs? What should this really be? Select. I like that. Uh, Doug. Right? Because we, we only need to return one thing, and that thing can be a select. Let's go ahead and make our options. So the best way to make our options, one way that I like is to map through something in our, in our state and just return those options. So I'll say const options. And I'll just say this that state dot breed dot map. And so for every breed, I will just return a new option. Inside of there it will be our breed. What's a good value for our option? What? Uh, what, what do you mean by object? Each breed is a string there. Breed? Yeah, okay. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, we Let's give it a key for React's purposes. We won't be using it. It needs to be a unique string or identifier. What would make sense for this one? Somebody say breed? Yeah, okay. That sounds good. <laughs> I'll get an argument out of me. Uh, so, okay, let's go ahead and render that inside of our select. We'll say options. This refers to our variable. Uh, I'm also just going to fill it with a blank option at the top for good measure. I'll give that a value of empty. I don't have to give this a key. It's not being iterated through it, right? OK. So let's take a look how that works. Refresh here. And we've got all of our breeze. Cool. Should there, what are we missing? What should there be? What should we add? I heard image. Uh, so we'll, we'll definitely get to images. But what about just in our selector component here? Get yeah, duck. Okay, we can say disabled. Um, and we'll say select breed. I'm cool with that. Yeah, Kong? We've got to listen to the change. Well, who listens to that? Select or the options? Select. Select on change. What do we want to happen when we call on change? Which function? The handle breed, right? We wrote that already. Uh, we passed it in as a prop. So how can I access that? Remember? How do I access that from our props? That's right there. Right? We can access that by going this dot props dot handle read, if we call it. Uh, it took in an argument though, right? It took in a breed. So that would have that would be our 
event.target.value, but we can't leave that invoked. So what do I need to do? Anonymous function pointing to that? Sounds good to me. Let's try it. Hopefully that will work. That will take it in the E. Sure. So if we we got to pass in an argument to handle green, right? We we made we agreed on that in our app JS. So it's expecting this argument. Now, if we pass in the argument, we know we know the argument is going to be the event that target that value. We already know that because we set up the option tags that way. But if we try to pass it right now. <laughs> That's an invoked function. So an invoked function is going to fire. It's going to call a set state. It's going to cause a re-render. Then we're going to come down to this line, and it's going to see a, an invoked function. So it's going to call set state. It's going to cause a re-render. It's going to get back to this line, and then it's going to see an invoked function. So it's going to fire. It's going to call set state. It's going to cause a re-render. Then it's going to come back to this line. It's going to see an invoked function, right? Which is going to fire and cause a set state. Right? I, 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 so that's not a great loop, right? It's not good to listen to. It's also not good to see. Uh, so instead, we need to put in a function that's uninvoked. So this anonymous function is uninvoked right now. And whenever this on change occurs, we will fire the uninvoked function because it's taking in the call. So this anonymous function is our callback to our on change. So it's going to see on change. As soon as that change happens, it's going to fire this anonymous function, which its only purpose is to fire that other function, essentially. So, um, so what are we using the e for in the anonymous function? I am using this e to pass it into. This is a, because the event occurs and it's going to get passed in e automatically, and I'm going to use that event. To pass the proper argument into our handle green. So that e goes to that e gets passed into the handle green. Mm -hmm. We use that to go through the target value. This function will have access to e because it was passed in as an argument to the anonymous function. Okay. Yeah, Doug, I saw you had your hand. Um, what if, like, is it better to do it this way, or if you are invoking and have you just pass down e? Uh, yeah, you could do it either either way. It would be totally fine. Uh, maybe the other way, I think your way might be better. This is just an al alternate way. Um, this is, you see kind of the syntax a little bit more with hooks. So I'm like kind of trying to like meta plant that seed. But yeah, there's nothing wrong with the other way either. Uh, okay, so we've got this. Anything else that we're missing in here in our select that we've used in our other selects? Yeah, Will? Uh, we've created all our options. Hmm. Anything. Anything from when we did the form J in our notes? Yeah, Marvin? No, prevent default is going to be for a sub form submission. What about the select? Yeah, is there anything else we're missing? Anything we might have passed down that we're not even using? Is this a controlled input? Is this an uncontrolled input? Uh, well, we're not rendering what's based from anything based on the state right now. So, agree. We're updating. Let's go back. Remember when we had app here? We passed in two things. We passed in a breed and the handle breed. 
We're using the handle breed. How come we're not using the breed anymore? Yeah, well, our state and the selector is just all the breeds. Has anybody gone back and looked at that note yet? Hmm. When the day we did the chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, on the select? What? Last name? It sets at the state to the parent, yeah. So why are we using the We're not using the, we passed the breed at the select too. So we need to use the same. Anybody go back yet? It's a race. The race is on. So we're supposed to take that breed and... We passed a piece of information to this component that we haven't used. So are we supposed to display the breeds? The yeah, well, we are, we're displaying all the breeds. I mean, the value. Which value? Where? Hmm? Who said that? Brutus? Tell me more. Uh, not quite. Yeah, David? The default value is trying to get the kids to go to a select breed because I tried doing the select and then what you have to set the state at the state. Yes. If you set the default to the, to the disabled option. Kind of. All right, so if, you, if, if anybody went back and reads the chocolate, vanilla, strawberry example, we're missing one thing that we're not doing here. And it is value. Where does that value belong? On the select tag. That's right, on the select tag. Right, on this tag, we can add a value. And we say what we want that value to be based off of what we got passed in, which is this dot props, dot breed. This is now a controlled input. It views only what was what's currently in the state. Don't forget that one. It's important. Okay, so now we've got that. Let's uh, let's go back to our app. Let's console log our state to make sure everything is working the way we want it to. Okay, we see our state starts with uh, empty string, and it's a select debris. We select something, and the breed changes with each select. Okay, so things are working the way we want them to be working. So that's, that's pretty tight. Any questions on what we've got so far? Uh, yeah, this is app state. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Which one do you want to see, app or select? Right, so what we're just missing is this nice little value tag there. We could destruct the props as well, yes. Yeah, we can we can go ahead and do that. That's fine. We can const handle breed and breed from this dot props. And then that way I can go ahead and 
and get rid of these. That sounds good. Nice catch. That's, good. That's a good little refactor. Brandon, I post all of it online. Uh, yeah, Kelvin, I thought you were taking a picture. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh no, this component I won't change. In case, in, in case you didn't get a good one. Yeah. So, you're putting the value of Yeah, so we are getting a we are getting the breed from the parent, which is our app right now, yes? And so we're saying whatever comes in from app, that's gonna be what we're showing in the app, in our select bar. This just controls what what it's showing. Just like in our inputs where we have our value pointing to our state, our selects should also point to some value from our state. That's just all about having this controlled input idea. It will still work, but it's not, it's a bit of an anti-pattern with React. In React, this is what the expectation was. Mm, I'm unsure. I don't know in the circumstances that it wouldn't work. It's just that this is, it's like, it's like one of those, like, this is just the way it's done. So, like, I've never tested it not doing the way it's done. Um, to be completely transparent, I don't know that well. That's a good question. If you do play around with, with how it's not done and you find a way that it breaks, let me know. Because that would be interesting, for sure. Uh, okay, so let's keep let's keep rolling. Yeah, we're almost there. Uh, okay, so we've got our app, we've got our dog selector. That's working now. We also want to have this uh, like dog dog by breed page, right? So we're just we're gonna grab ten pictures for the breed, right? So let's go ahead and just, let's just build that. So, okay, let's make a new file. And we can call this, I, I don't know, dog, dog by breed. Seems like an okay name to me. I, if anyone's got a better name, let, please let me know. I'm sure there's a better one. Dogs by breed. Ah, I like that. Sure, let's do that. Anything better than that one? Snoop Doggy Dog. Oh, not enough, sir. Going once, going twice. Sold the Deja for Dogs by Breed. Let's keep it moving. Uh, okay, Dogs by Breed, is this going to handle the Is this going to have a state? So what's this, what's this component going to do? But what pictures is it going to display? The one in the array. Which, of, which pictures do we have in an array? Right. Like, let's say I'm, I'm unwilling to change the state in our app. Will this component need to have state? Yes. Yeah, because we, we're going to go out and grab 10 pictures, right, for a specific breed. So if I'm unwilling to change the state in our app, which for this example, I am. Uh, in real life, right, obviously you could move the state to your app. But for this one, I'm unwilling to compromise. Let's go ahead and give this one a state as well. So let's import React, uh, CC, and we call this dogs by breed. And what should our state be this time? Uh, empty array, sure. So we'll call that like dog pick, dog pictures. Dog Let's call it dog pics. I like that. It's kind of you don't want to mess around with that wording. Dog pics, and then we will have. Oh, it's, 
as it slowly gets understood around the room. Uh, great. Uh, and we will have a, let's call it number of dogs, in case we ever wanted to just mess around and change it. So we'll say number of, of dogs, and, and we'll say we want to start with always getting 10 dogs, yeah? All right, so this thing looks okay to me. Let's also go ahead and throw in a div for now that just says hello from dogs. Let's go ahead and import this into our app. Don't worry, we'll, we'll go back there in just a second. Uh, dogs by breed from dot slash dogs by breed. And then let's also, okay, let's also go ahead and show that. Should we pass anything into this component as prop? Nothing? How will you know what breed to show? Yeah, Doug? The breed. The breed, right? We got to pass in the breed because it needs to know which breeds to go get. So I'm going to go ahead and call this breed. Uh, and we already instructed that earlier, so just write breed like that. Cool, cool. I'm getting, I'm actually, I'm getting really excited. Uh, okay, so we've got our breed. I'm getting so excited because we're going to get to do this other life cycle method that we didn't get to do yesterday, so I'm getting pretty amped up. Uh, hopefully you're getting amped up too. I hope, and we we'll, should be done in about a half hour. Uh, okay, so we've got dogs by breed here. Let's make sure we're getting that. Yep, hello from dogs. Great. So what do we want to do? What's a method we might need? Yeah, right? We're going to need some kind of function to go out and grab 10 pictures of some certain dogs, right? So let's go ahead and say get um, dog hex, uh, and we're going to use async await, I imagine. So I'm going to go ahead and just do this. This is going to take in. Uh, does this need to take in anything? Let's see. Let's have this take in the breed. And let's have this also take in the number of dots. Okay. So let's go ahead and make our breed URL. So I'm going to say breed const breed URL. And I have the URL here. So essentially what this does is it's going to go to our dog API. It's going to pass in the breed, and it's going to grab this many random images. Fair? Straightforward enough? I have to select that? Sure. Let's see if this opens in the right spot. Yes. Slacked. It's been slacked. Somebody commented. Ah, Doug. The Doug API. Nice. Nice. No, Doug. Doug made a comment on the post at 8:09. Was it 8:09? I forgot already. It's a yeah, but it doesn't matter.
Okay. Okay, so I'm assuming most of us have added that link. So let's go ahead and go make our fetch. Yeah. So we'll say let res. Sure. Let's do it. I dig. Uh, okay. We will say uh, let res equal await axios stack git and we'll pass in our read URL that we made. I don't know why that capitalized axios happened to you too? Oh my god, Twilight Zone. Who else did it happen to? Anyone else? Hey, hey look. Let's let's start a reality TV show. Right now. <laughs> uh, all right. Hey now. Uh, okay, let's put our let's put a debugger here. When might we want to call this? Do we ever want to call this? We could call it in component did mount. I just I ah, how do I want to show this? Okay, I know it's going to be response that data that message because I'm familiar with the API and I've already used it for the other two. Okay, so for now let's not put the debugger in because I don't want to spoil a reveal. Is there a well, that's component. That's component did mount. So we can say this that set state. Let's go ahead and update our dog fix, and we will just go ahead and do res that data dot message. And for our error, I'm going to go ahead and just clear it. This that set state dog fix pointing to an empty array. Okay, so we're going to call this at some point, and we're going to get all of these dog picks, yes? So the question is, where do we call this? So we could call this in component did mount. That would be OK, but we might not have any dogs yet, right? Because they might not have selected it. And it's still mounted on that screen. So what would happen if we don't have any dogs? It's just well, it should just look. Well, we, at the moment, we want it to just look. Well, it's, what's the error right now? Hang on, sorry. Axios is not defined. Oh, OK, we should probably import Axios. I thought I already did this. It automatically does it for you. And it didn't mean it. Not for me. But I thought it was capital, and then we like commented on it and stuff. We want it to just look like this without it saying hello from dog. So it'll just be empty until they select the new set of dogs. Um, so we don't have hello from dog yet until they select Not yet. In fact, let's go ahead and just, because the next step is pretty not, like the thing I'm going to add is pretty insignificant to like the goal. So let's go ahead and just iterate through our supposed dog images and pass that to our dog app, just like before. So let's also import our dog that we built in the first part of the warm-up. Dog from dot slash, I think we just called it dog, yep. And then in here, Let's go ahead and iterate through our dogs. So we'll say, let, um, I'll call it dogs, is this.state.dogfix.map. And for each dog, we want to just return the dog. And this took in an image. 
which is just the dog, like so. All right, let me know if anyone's confused about that. We're iterating through, so what do we need? A key. A key? Okay. So I'm going to add the key here. What might be a good key in this situation? Sure, dog sounds good. Okay, so now we have all of our dogs, and I'm just going to render that instead. And we have some error somewhere. We don't have uh, dog as an argument in the last key. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Great. Thank you. I didn't make an anonymous function. Good catch. So nice debugging with um, 30 people watching. Because they can, like, this there, it can help. And it's like so much faster. I don't even have to read the error because somebody else has already found it. So that's really. That is a perk of the job. Uh, the negative is that you're making bugs in front of 30 people. Uh, we don't do it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Shia, what's up? Maybe you don't have dog fix as an array for you? Okay, so. Now it's the interesting part. So what's a, what's a life cycle method that I said was good, but we didn't use yet? What was it? Did update. Component did update. Good memory, right? I did mention like there were three that we should be aware of especially. So let's go ahead and add component did update for this. So the idea is that we're passing in this prop, which is our breed that we want. And whenever we get a brand new breed, we got to go make a new fetch, right? And so we can't do that every time we mount because we're only going to be mounting one time. And so we won't know when to call. And so here's the case scenario when, depending on the new prop that's coming in, we want to go make a whole new Axios call. Does that make sense? Yes. So this is a great time for us to use component did update. So we're going to go over here and we're going to say component did update. Now a component did update can take a few different arguments. Uh, in this case, I think I only care about previous props. So I'm going to say previous props. Right? This refers to my last prop that I have. And in here, I can do a little bit of logic. Um, I can look at my, here, I'll, uh, I'll put a debugger. Take a look. So we save that here. Go here, and nothing's run. All right. uh, I'm going to change my breed. This is just happening slow, but I did click on it, I promise. Hello. There we go. Uh, let's go with some dog there. And we hit component did update. So we see before our previous prop was breed. That was empty, right? We can take a look uh, in here. I'll say previous props breed. But now this stop props, now it's Karen. Am I pronouncing that right? Anybody know dogs? Karen? Am I pronouncing that right? Oh. I think I chose like the one that I can't read. That's all right. Um, Karen. So Karen, right, she's now here. And before we had previous props, which is empty, we still have our state. This dot state. Our state is an empty array. What should we be doing now? Now that they're not the same, what do we want to do? 
Yeah, we want to go make that fetch, right? So let's just go ahead and make a few things. So I'm going to go ahead and say const, and I'll say old brief. And this was previous props dot um, brief. Const, let's say new brief, which is this dot props dot brief. And we can take our number. Const, I'll say number of dogs is equal to this dot state dot number of dogs. And now let's do a little bit of a condition. So I'll say, hey, like if, if my old brief is not equal to my new brief, right? So if I'm no longer matched up, so there's been a, 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 pro, a change in this specific prop, because I could pass other props and I don't care if those have changed for this case scenario. But in the event that my old read is not the same as my new read, I'm going to write this dot get dog fix, and I'm going to pass in my new read and my number of dogs, because that's what we said we were going to pass in. So in the event that my old read is not used to my new read, this, see, this is going to run every time the, the component updates. And the component will update every time there's a change in props or change in state. Right? That's going to always cause us to run. So since we're selecting and we're making a change, and that prop is going to get passed into here, it's going to say, oh, our component's updating. And it's going to look at our previous props compared to our current props. And if this one specific prop is not the same, we want to fire this new function to go get the new dots. So, um, so component get update is waiting for previous props. So it's not waiting. So whenever the component updates, so what causes an update? A change in props, a change in state, and whenever that occurs, component did update will run. Always. We just happen to only care in the event that the old breed is not equal to the new breed. But it isn't, so the state is dog fix and number of dogs. But we're, we're focused on the, the previous. We care about the props in this one because the getting of the dog fix is dependent on the breed that gets passed up. which is coming through as a prop. So let's give this a shot and just see how many bugs we have. So we go, okay, uh, select, uh, why do we only get one duck? It is cute, but it's not what we wanted. Oh. Okay, that one worked. Maybe it was just that that's like the only dog that they have in that, for that. Maybe I grabbed like an unpopular dog. Uh, let's call Dingo, that seems like a popular dog. Okay, so so it definitely does work. I That was just like a freak incident that we chose an obscure dog that nobody wants. A dino? This is a Dingo. Maybe the dingo ate oh, your baby. baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. We've got a lot of dingoes in Australia. Uh, is any questions on the dingo or anything else that we've been doing in the code? Oh, my God. That was awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, I watch a lot of Chase's War and everything and a little bit of a flood of the phone calls. Yeah, we will. In this case, um, um, so we're saying that the state is going to change if the old breed is not. That's right. So this fires. Component that update fires when we change the props. And so the prop we care about is the breed prop. Because we could pass other props if we wanted to. So in case that the user by mistake clicks on the same breed, should we have something to catch to prevent on one of the edges? So if they click on the same breed, we won't be passing in a different prop. And so because we don't pass a different prop in, there's no change of props, 
We won't actually even fire half of it because we haven't changed the props. But if for some reason it did go through and we had an update, it still wouldn't pass this qualification because it would still be equal to each other, so we would never fire that function. So once you put the component in now, now all the options that are being doesn't even count, I mean, yeah, the component did the thing, right? All you have to do is have the component. Because before we had hello Right? No, it's mounted. It's mounted. But you said we didn't want to see the hello well, we just don't see it because it's empty. There's nothing there. It's empty. It's empty because we haven't gotten, we've, our props haven't changed and the props are starting as empty. If it wasn't there, we would never see anything because we would never fetch our dots. We're using this to fetch the dots. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, if we put, if we have a component that's mounted and we have something in it to see, we will, we will see it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we could do some logic somewhere else to show, like, should we mount this? So, here we're not using the component, we're not using the component. Correct. So, I know, yeah, I know this is new, to be completely honest, you probably won't need to use components and update very often, but it is a good idea to know that you have it. I think I used something like this when I made my Yelp application for when people would change something to do with my form. So I don't exactly remember, but I just remember using it to solve some annoying bug I couldn't figure out uh, because a, a woman named Omi told me to, and I was like, okay. Um, but, because you could structure this differently, right? We could have gone and fetched it in our uh, app instead, and maybe we would have come across less problems. But I just wanted to introduce this so you have it in your wheelhouse. You've seen a situation where it works in real life. Like a, this is somewhat of like a real life situation. Situation. Yeah, Doug. The The arguments that component did update. Let's uh, let's look up the exact arguments. Uh, compo component did update. Let's go to the docs. Uh, so it takes in it can take in the previous props, the previous state, and something called snapshot that I don't know about, sorry. But I think previous props comes first because that is the most common use. You don't usually need to use the previous state or the uh, snapshot. Like, because even their example their example looks a heck of a lot like ours, if you notice, right? This stuff props that user ID not equal to the previous props that user ID go fetch the data. Very, very similar, right? Um, but that's the more common use. Any other questions on this? The previous props are given to us as part of component did update. Just like how when we have uh, this dot set state and we use the callback and we say previous state, that's just given to us. That's free. Free fallen. Any other uh, questions on the code? 
or anything, how we're doing this, what we're doing, anything at all, from any of y'all. Any of y'all uh, from y'all? No? All right. Uh, great. That's the end of the lecture. Uh, John, Jenya, can you guys post, someone post Paris, please? Uh, 